Hi everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and this weekend we got our first snowstorm of the season and my five-year-old Lucas went and drew an awesome picture of me filming a Chemnitz video snow dyeing yarn. He even sketched out a colorway for me to do and here is the uh, Chemnitz filmer aka my tripod with camera. This picture is awesome and so inspiring. Unfortunately, the snowstorm turned into an ice storm and it was super, super cold. But man, I really want to try to bring Lucas's vision to life. So we are going to attempt to dye some yarn with this really frozen, crusty snow. Now, unfortunately, the bathtub where I usually do my snow dyeing has a frozen drain. So I set up a tarp and we're going to use some towels and hope to mitigate the mess as much as we possibly can. We'll see how that goes. I have a kitty litter box and a sort of just plastic basket that I got from the dollar store. And I'm going to use this to catch, hopefully, a lot of the snow and food coloring. I have also pre-soaked 100 grams of Knit Picks Stroll Fingering Weight yarn, so that way the yarn will be ready to go to absorb some fantastic color. Today I'm going to use a combination of Kool-Aid because of the citric acid in it and liquid food colorings to create the colorway that Lucas designed. But I also first need to lay this yarn out on our basket um, and Hmm, trying to figure out the best way to get this spread out as much as possible. I guess this isn't as spread out as I would really like, but hopefully we'll get some decent color penetration on our yarn. If there is, I know we will end up catching some color beneath this in the bin, and so I can always use that to and soak that up on some of the skein of yarn, or if there's a lot of white space, we'll see what Lucas thinks and we might over dye it. But now I need to try to go get a huge chunk of snow. Just so you guys know what I'm working with, we've got really, really, really heavy, heavy snow that you can walk on top of. You know, this isn't really that scrapable. So this is gonna be a lot more like ice than snow, but we'll see what happens. All right, this is gonna be a little more effort than I thought, but I did get my first big piece. I was hoping to get one piece that would be big enough to cover the whole thing, but you know what? We're gonna work with what we've got. <laughs> and my hands are cold. Maybe I should set these aside and try to, oh dear, the yarn is gonna start sticking to it. Um, Actually, that is reasonably, eh, we don't have quite a good overhang yet. I think I need one more good piece for over on this side. All right, I think we've got our last little piece here um, to overhang that section. Clearly, this is like big sheets of ice. And we do have cracks where some of the color might run through, but I think that that could be pretty cool. You can see some of the yarn on the bottom. We aren't completely covered by any stretch, but I'm gonna do my best to add the Kool-Aid just to the top of the yarn, or sorry, just to the top of the snow and not onto the yarn, and we'll see what happens. Our yarn inspiration very clearly has orange on one side, blue on the other, and then green and red in the middle. So that's what we're gonna do. We are gonna start with the following packages of Kool-Aid, and then as needed, maybe add some liquid food coloring on top. But here lies our acid source for this project. All right, we've got our, whoops, our blue side, sort of our blue swirls. Let's add some more blue swirls, kind of getting it all over and all over our tarp too. Don't worry, I'll work on cleaning that. But I am trying to bring the color all the way through 
this section and you can see it already starting to sink deeply into the snow. I'm going to do a similar thing here on the orange side, paying a lot of attention to the overhang section um, because if it's going to drip over that edge and hopefully drip down the yarn, I want to try to get color to the very edge. We'll see how well it works, but that is my intent. All right. Now, how funny, actually, I grabbed one packet of cherry and three packets of lemon lime, and there is one line of red and three lines of green. So, nailed it. Um, the red, because of the way the snow goes, I'm adding some of the color a little below and trying to make sure some of it will actually get onto the yarn, but hopefully it'll get onto the yarn and it won't all drip off. Now for our green. And again, trying to get some in the over and under hangs of some of the snow. Um, there's a lot of dimensions here with our ice, but we could end up getting with some really cool melting patterns because of our glacier-like rifts that we've got going on here. Um, so, I don't know, I'm pretty excited about it. I want to make sure we have, definitely have some in these middle regions. Goodness, now I don't know if I want any liquid food coloring or if I just want to stick with this Kool-Aid. I mean that's pretty well covered so far so I might just stick with that I definitely need to clean up the area um, to make sure I don't have Kool-Aid powder stinking slipping around to stain things but I think I'll check back in in a little while and we'll see how this is melting my house is really cold so I do have a space heater running in this hallway to sort of help things along a bit. Um, it's not right next to it, it's probably like four feet away, um, but I did want to bring some additional heat in because hopefully this will all melt before I have to go pick up the kids from school. <laughs> we'll see. We're about 30 minutes in and while it doesn't look like there's a ton of melting from the top, you can see that color is going through all the way, that, at least that first layer. The blue is going to have to go through two layers to hit the yarn. But the red and orange are starting to hit. We can see over here we are starting to get a little bit of bright red on the yarn. And ooh, I mean this is looking like a popsicle right now. Hmm. Oh, I bet that orange is going to start dripping soon. So, anyway, we will give this some more time. Um, and all of it, there do look like there's some pretty dense patches, which I'm a little curious about what is making it so pigmented there. But, I think our little snow cone, ice cone, whatever, smells fra fragrant, and can't wait to see where we end up. Two hours in, and we still can't really see it from the surface. Although those dark spots seem to have tunneled all the way through. There's a lot of pitting, but we're definitely starting to see some color beneath. It seems like a lot of my blue might be running towards the center. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure how much of the blue I see on the yarn yet. I do see some great reds though still. So. We'll see how much of the color ends up on the yarn versus beneath it, but keep melting, Snow. Another hour later, you can see that a lot of the blue has left this top sheet. There's a hint of the color there, but the color is soaking through the ice faster than the ice itself is melting. 
and we're definitely seeing some blues and greens deposited on the yarn beneath. The flow through is looking fairly orange brown. Um, I'm not sure how much orange will make it onto the yarn, but we shall see as we melt. And ooh, ooh, look at that red over there. And I've definitely seen some brown and see some hints of orange, but you can see like this little cavern. And those drips are happening sort of over the edge of the yarn. All right, I do see some reds over there, but I'm wondering, you know, are we just missing all that orange? Should I, like, let's see if I can catch some of it. I know I'm moving the yarn, but it's my project. I can do it. Oh, I don't even know if I'm catching that drip. There we go. Now maybe we'll catch some. There we go. We got some orange on the yarn now. <laughs> All right. We'll be back. I'm starting to lose count with hours, but certainly a lot more time has progressed. Um, we are getting nice and melty, and amazingly, all of the melt is going into our container. So that's awesome. But we definitely see some really, really beautiful tones on our yarn. I feel like there's a there only very little color left in the snow itself. Um, but, oh look, there's a huge white patch because of the way that that drip pattern is taking place. It's just all really, really cool. There's still a good hour before I have to pick up the kids from school. And there is so little color left in the snow. I definitely see some yellow in there from the orange, but you know, it looks like there's, you know, most of the snow is either, or most of the color is either in the melt or in the yarn. So I think, I think we might make it. And even if it doesn't melt before the kids get home, I'm going to be able to pick this up and put it on the counter because there is no liquid that dripped on the outside. Yay! I, you know, I'm amazed that there's that huge, huge white patch in the center. And that's what's so fun about the snow dyeing is because you get these random patches of color. The transfer to the counter is complete and I'm excited for Lucas to see what this looks like. That's such a yarn and what's with the snow on it? Well, I was using the snow to dye the yarn. So I added the dye on top of the snow and put the snow on top of the yarn. What do you think of that, Rocky? Snow. Yes, that's the melted snow. Is there any snow left on it? Uh, yeah, just a little bit there. Just a little bit there. See, now, the board over here seems like it's fun. Yeah, it melted. How does this compare to your original drawing? Well, it has this all the colors except for orange. Did you add orange in? I did, but a lot of it seemed to have melted through or it combined with the red. But look, there's a little bit of orange over there. Um, hmm. So, do you th do you like the way this turned out, or do you think we need to dye some more yarn? Looking at your picture. Some more yarn, but without the snow. Without the snow, you don't like the way it came out with the snow. Yeah, it would be no snow, no snow dye yarn. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Do you like it when there's more white or less white on the yarn? Less white. Because you added a bit too much white. Mm. Well, I didn't add the white. The snow melting decided how much white there would be. If you look at the underside, do you see that there's not very much color on the underside of it at all? Yeah. It's mostly white on the underside. Why? Did you paint it or anything? No. That's just the way that it happened. The snow has almost all melted, so let's take a peek underneath. You can see that we did not get good penetration of color. These colors were really striking near the top of the surface. Now we got some gorgeous blending of the blue and green here. And um, I think, ooh, we got reasonable penetration of some of this red. 
the orange, a lot of the orange is gone. Or really, I think a lot of the orange ended up sort of on this under portion. But I now need to wait for, well, all right, I'm not going to wait for this last piece of snow to melt because that's basically got no color in it anyway. But now we want to let the yarn sort of return to room temperature um, so that way we can steam it to actually set the color. One thing that I forgot about snow dyeing is that I think it's a technique that actually works better on non-superwash yarns because there the dye doesn't strike as fast so we can get better color penetration. So that's just something to keep in mind for next time. But once Lucas is in bed, I will come back and we'll microwave the yarn. I am now going to take our super saturated snow dyed yarn, put it in a microwave safe dish, cover it up, and microwave it on high until it is really hot to touch. In my microwave, I'm usually gonna microwave for a total of four minutes in two minute increments on high. As for the rest of our delightfully green brown liquid, I'm going to dump this. Normally, I'm very much a leave no die, die behind person. We've probably got some reasonable color in here, but I will be leaving it behind. After the total of four minutes, it is quite hot to touch. I'm now gonna leave it to cool completely before I wash the yarn. But yeah, we've got some cool colors in there. It's the moment of truth. Let's wash our yarn. And uh, I want the record to show my hands are covered in food coloring, not because of the yarn project, <laughs> but because I was making cake. Um, I'm expecting all of the color to remain in the yarn from our Kool-Aid, and it does. Now, this is not the most balanced yarn. From looking at it, we see these patches of color. They don't go all the way through various areas. This is likely going to lead to some kind of asymmetric coloration. The colors are nicely spaced out, but I do think that this is a good candidate for some fun over dyeing and maybe actually bringing the Kim kids into a pull on episode. Uh, so yeah, the color is very much in the yarn, but there's definitely enough citric acid and Kool-Aid even diluted to dye yarn. But again, I know I mentioned this earlier, I think that, ooh, we do have some good orange. I think that we would have gotten more saturation and more spread from the color if A, we had instead of slabs of ice, we had more powdery snow, and B, if we had used a non-superwash yarn, because here, the color, even without heat, was striking quickly, so it wasn't even going all the way through the section where it was soaking. So anyway, I'm gonna go hang this up to dry, and then we'll come back with the finished dry yarn and some conclusions. Here is the finished snow dyed yarn. Now, we did not get a lot of color coverage here. We basically had sort of a chunk of ice, but you can see that this would not be a repeating colorway. There are clearly sections that have like these orange and greens and then much bigger sections of white, sections with more blue, some with more white, which could give, I'm not sure unless I rescan this, if this would be sort of more of a gradient or what, but certainly, you know, it's not like a regular repeating pattern. That being said, there is color all over the yarn. For all, there's a lot of white. And we do have pretty intense blues, reds, and oranges in here. So I think that part of at least his color story did remain. There are a few small specks of color and almost speckling in here, which I also find pretty fun. Next time I do some snow dyeing, I am probably going to pick a non-superwash yarn. And that's because when the colors are dripping through, they're not going to strike where, where they hit. They will spread more through the fiber. We might still have a lot of white patches, but the odds of having a lot more color 
and seeing these random ways that these colors are sort of flowing together is more likely. And I can say now as I'm filming these conclusions that there are some other frozen themed dyeing projects coming to Dye Pot Weekly before we hit summer. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and if you enjoyed this video make sure that you are subscribed to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel. I love to encourage people to try dyeing yarn and to think outside the box and try something new whether that be my own kids, you or your kids. I think that dyeing yarn with food coloring and Kool-Aid is really a family friendly activity or a great activity to do with some friends and it's just a lot of fun. I do have an Etsy shop where you can find hundreds of skeins of yarn featured in past and upcoming videos, a Patreon where you can get behind the scenes sneak peeks, and there's a lot of other links where you can find me all in the video description. Thank you so much for watching. So what should we do next time, do you think? Uh, I don't know yet. I haven't, I haven't designed. Oh, do you want to design the next yarn? Yeah, I'm going to go do that. Oh, okay. Okay, Ryder, what do you want to say to the camera? Uh, uh, this, hey, where's no iron dot yarn? Well, because that's what we're doing today. It's called snow dyeing. Snow dyeing? Wait, what? <laughs> Those are not I just like. <laughs> what don't you like? She's eyes is on the is on dying yarn at all. Oh, you don't like the the ice on the yarn? No. <laughs> what should be on the yarn? Nothing. Nothing. Yeah. So but does how does it make you feel? Very mad. You're mad. Yeah. How mad are you? Just mad. <laughs> You're mad that there's snow on the yarn? No, ice on the yarn. Oh. Is there anything else you want to say on the video? Uh, uh, I want milk, water, <laughs> juice, cow juice. Those are all I want. <laughs> okay. Is there anything you want to say about yarn for the video? Um, yarn is something that with ice and water and that water on it. Do you like this project? Do you think it's pretty? Maybe ice is belongs outside. Oh, the ice belongs outside? Yeah. <laughs>